So cracked tooth is a very interesting topic because every clinician has a different approach to a cracked tooth. And some people, if you go to like one doctor, they'll say to extract a tooth. If you go to another doctor, they'll say, oh, keep the tooth. And the, the reason why cracked tooth is such a controversy is because there is no right or wrong answer. If you go to five different dentists, you're gonna get five different treatment plans. And it's because of the amount of knowledge or the providing dentist has. Because when you think about it, when you're giving a treatment plan, when you're diagnosing, you can only diagnose or treatment plan the things that you know how to do, and the things that you have seen how to do. If you don't know something, then you're gonna miss it. Because if you don't know something as a clinician, then you don't know what you don't know. And that's actually part of any kind of field that you are in, unfortunately. And that is the case with dentistry as well. Some providers would prefer a treatment that they don't have to deal with the headache. So if there is a questionable prognosis of a tooth, then instead of giving the patient options, some people will say, hey, let's just take it out and put an implant in because it is more of a predictable outcome in certain cases. And sometimes that is the right option if the patient wants that option. But I think as a clinician, it's always important to really inform and educate the patients on what their options are before saying, oh, you need to extract this tooth. So when you go to a dental office, every office has a different treatment philosophy and a mission. And our office focuses on saving teeth. And that's the reason why the practice is called Crossville Endo. Endo stands for endodontics, and we have an endodontist in-house, which are providers who are in dentistry to save the teeth. So we save the teeth by doing the root canal. We save the teeth by doing apical surgery on it before we go into the extraction option. Now, it's not something that is feasible for everyone, so I'm not saying that it's always the right thing, but it's always the right thing to give all the information that the patient needs to make an informed decision that the patient has. And I think that's something that every clinician should do. And that's what we abide by. So when it comes to cracked teeth, the reason why I went through this spiel is because cracked teeth is something that is a very debated topic in dentistry, and especially when it comes to endodontics. So cracks can happen for multiple reasons. It can happen because of your biting habit. Um, it can happen because of the way that teeth occlude in the wrong way. And it's been doing that for years that the tooth finally gives up and the root starts to kind of um, like crack. And over a period of time when that happens, when you eat something like apple or chips, like over time that cracks, crack gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that one thing can actually snap off the tooth and it just doesn't happen over time. And crack can happen that way. Another crack incident could be like a trauma. So if you eat something really hard, or if you like eat like an olive pit, like suddenly, or if you bumped into anything, if you have been in an accident, then the tooth can get cracked and it could be induced by trauma. And another thing that can happen with a cracked tooth, and what would cause a cracked tooth is when the tooth has a large cavity inside the tooth, that the inside of the tooth becomes hollow over time without you knowing it. So basically like an eggshell. And like I said, like one thing, like even the chip or even something soft when you chew it the wrong way, it can crack off. So if you chew something very soft and the tooth cracks off, that probably means that there was something chronic happening that was not being diagnosed over a period of time. Now, the reason why I bring up all these different scenarios of cracked tooth is because depending on these scenarios, the treatment approach will be different. Basically when there's a crack, our approach to things is to try to save the tooth. So if the patient's okay with attempting to try to save the tooth, then what we do is we chase the crack down on the tooth to make sure that the tooth stops, or to look at where the crack stops. Now, if the crack stops at a level where it can be saved, Typically, we say that if it's not below the bone, then we try to save the tooth by doing the root canal and a cap. And another diagnostic tool that we use for cracked tooth is always a Combin CT. It gives us a pretty good idea of whether the crack goes underneath the bone level or just stays within the top of the bone level. If the Combin CT shows that the crack is not underneath, like extending underneath the bone, then we say, hey, let's try to save it. Now, if the comb beam CT shows that the crack is obviously underneath the bone, then it's just not worth saving it or even trying to save it because it will be a waste of your time and resources as a patient. So 
First thing, the comb beam to make sure that there's no crack underneath, obvious crack on the tooth. Then we go to the next step of trying to chase this crack to make sure that the crack is in fact on top of the bone level. Um, if that's confirmed clinically, what we would do is we do the root canal, we do the permanent filling and the cap on it. So we circumferentially protect the tooth and um, we monitor for any kind of further symptoms and areas. Now, when it comes to crack, unfortunately, when the crack starts, we don't know whether that crack is going to progressively get worse even after the treatment or if the crack is going to stop where it's at. And because there could be a chance of a microfracture that it's not even visible in our eyes, with, even with the magnification of the microscope. So that is the thing that we run into in terms of like the uncertainty of a cracked tooth. So whenever someone's going into treatment for a cracked tooth, we always inform the patient that there is always a chance of failure of any kind of treatment that you do on a tooth that can impact like the treatment outcome and like the course of the treatment. Because once you do the treatment, when you do the crown, yes, that's already like investment there. And if it fails, then you still need to get an extraction and an implant. So it depends on like what the patient's comfortable with, but we always make sure that we have this conversation so that way you can make the you know, right decision that's right for you. Now, another thing that I was talking about is trauma tooth. So trauma tooth becomes a little bit more trickier when it comes to crack teeth, because when there is trauma, um, yes, like if, if the crack happened because of trauma, we take a CT again to make sure that there is no bone fracture or root fracture associated with the trauma. And if there is a bone fracture or root fracture, then sometimes we have to take the tooth out. There's no option. And um, if the bone looks okay, the roots are sound, and it looks like the tooth doesn't have like a crack on the root itself, then we try to save the tooth by doing the root canal, crown, and the same thing that would happen with the previous situation. With a trauma tooth though, um, with trauma, it is interesting because the prognosis can be questionable uh, when it comes to the healing, um, especially when there's trauma to the tooth, like it can cut down the nutrition and like the blood supply to the roots that it may cause the root to resorb. Um, like meaning that the roots can get shorter over a period of time. It's rare, but it can happen. So that's one of the consequences that you have when there's any kind of trauma on the tooth. So we closely monitor the tooth and this is when like the routine checkup becomes very important to make sure that nothing wrong happens after the treatment. And with any kind of root canal treatment, any kind of situation like this, we always book a six month recare visit as a routine thing for everyone to make sure that we follow up with the case so that way nothing falls through the crack. Um, another option with crack teeth, obviously what I spoke about is an extraction. An extraction is a feasible option and it is a very good option um, if it is something that you feel comfortable with. So when there's a crack tooth, because there is a questionable, like, questionable prognosis with treatment, sometimes patients will elect to extract and put an implant there because it tends to be a little bit more predictable than like uh, gambling on the tooth that has a crack. So that's a feasible option too. If we go that route, then we would make sure that the tooth is atraumatically extracted, meaning that we try to preserve the bone structure as much as possible. And we'll see if we need to graft that site with bone grafting material or not. And then we'll put like an implant screw in there and to make sure that it heals properly for the implant crown. Now, what I tell my patients is, yes, these both are two feasible options for cracked teeth. It's just that you have to like understand the pros and cons of different um, treatment options and what works for you and we're here with any kind of um, information that you need and um, any support that you need for making that decision. And when you try to save the tooth, um, one of the common questions that I get is, oh, after the root canal, if I need an extraction, can I get it? Of course, when you try to save the tooth by doing the root canal and the crown, if it doesn't work, there's always an option of extraction. It's a matter of trying to save the tooth and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then we'll need to go to the extraction route or just going straight to an extraction route. But like I said, both are good options. Um, if you need any opinions on it, please let me know. Um, please shoot me an email, a DM, whatever. And you know, we're always here. Book your appointment so that way we can give you more information on it if you need help.